Hello all, my name is Krish Nayak and uh, welcome to my YouTube channel. So guys, in one of our previous video, I had already shown you how you can actually fine tune Llama 2 model with the with your own custom data set. And uh, over there we learned about or we saw code that were related to something called as quantization, LoRa, Clora techniques and all, right? And all these techniques are super important if you also want to train or fine tune your own LLM models with your own custom data set. Now, when I showed the code, right, when I executed that particular code, many people had actually requested about to explain the theoretical in-depth intuition about it. And that is what I'm actually going to do. Uh, the best thing is that when I learned about this theoretical intuition and I'm doing it from past two to three months, it's quite amazing, guys. You Now, this is where that machine learning era is probably coming, where I used to upload a lot of theoretical in-depth geometrical intuitions regarding various machine learning algorithms. Similarly here also in this series of videos, in this video, we are going to discuss about quantization. Now, what exactly is quantization? We are going to discuss about that. In the upcoming video, we are going to see techniques like LoRa, Clora, every maths intuition that is probably involved. Uh, and this all are important for the fine tuning technique, right? If I probably talk about generative AI, one of the most in important interview questions will be something related to fine tuning and what is the techniques that is usually used behind it right so what all things we are going to cover in this video in this video we are going to talk about quantization um, specifically when i say quantization it is all about model quantization because if you remember in our llama 2 code right when we are doing the fine tuning here you could see that we had put some parameters right regarding precision based modeling we had spoken about quantization you know when what when we are downloading the models you know from a higher bit to a lower bit why we are specifically doing this i will be explaining about that right so with respect to each and every parameters definitely i will explain you the theoretical intuition and later on you just go ahead and see my previous video with respect to all the coding now you everything will make sense okay so <clears throat> what exactly is quantization we're going to discuss you know uh, we're going to discuss about full precision half precision and this is something related to data types like how the data is stored in the memory when i specifically say data in llm models i will talk about weights and parameters right because at the end of the day llms are also deep learning neural networks in the form of transformers or bert right then we're going to discuss about what exactly is calibration uh, this is also called as uh, like calibration in model quantization, right? We are going to also make sure that we are going to see some problems, right? How we can actually do calibration. Then there is different, different modes of quantization, right? Uh, first of all, I will explain you the definition, then only you'll be able to understand. In modes of quantization, we are going to discuss about two types. One is post-training quantization and quantization aware training, right? So these all are very important in terms of fine tuning techniques. Now let's go ahead and talk about quantization and we will try to see the definition, right? Quantization. Okay. Now, if you want to really understand the meaning of quantization, it is better to write a simple definition for it. Okay. So quantization basically means conversion from higher memory format to a lower memory format, right? Now, I've written a very generic definition what exactly quantization means. It is nothing but conversion from a higher memory format to a lower memory format. Now, when I say higher memory format, let's, let's consider um, any data right and if i probably consider any neural network okay so let's say if i have neural network right and when we train this neural network right all these neural network are interconnected at the end of the day what are the parameters that is probably involved over here it is nothing but weights right we specifically have weights now weights are usually in the form of metrics right let's say that i have a three cross three weight okay i'm just taking as an example in one of the layer i have three cross three weights and over here, every value, right, is probably stored in the memory in the form of 32 bits, right, 32 bits. We also say these bits as 
we also we also denote it as something like something like fp32 now what exactly is fp32 so fp32 basically means i can also consider it as see fp full form is not floating point okay but we are i'm just writing floating point 32 bits right when i say fp fp basically means it is nothing but full precision right full precision or single precision okay so this is the definition that is probably given right but in short this is like a floating point number okay so over here let's say my number is somewhere around 7.23 now this number is stored based on 32 bits in the memory right now understand when you have a very big neural network or you have llm models right as you see different different llm models right parameters keeps on increasing right some may have 70 billion parameters if i probably consider llama 2 with 70 billion parameters that basically means it has 70 billion parameters in terms of weights and bias okay now it is not possible for me to let's say i want to use this particular model and i want to probably do a, some fine tuning with respect to the normal gpu that i have right and let's say i have a very limited ram in my system let's say the ram i have is somewhere around 32 gb right i cannot directly download this specific model and put it in my mem in my ram itself right let's say or load it in my vram that is available in the gpu because gpu also has some limited ram right and it is not possible you cannot directly download it obviously it will require huge space the other way is that yes i can probably take a cloud space somewhere let's say in aws i can create my instance i can say hey give me this this much ram 64 gb ram and i probably want this much gpu and then i will try to load the model over there that you can do it but over there what is basically happening lot of cost is involved right based on the resources the cost is involved right so in this scenario and why this 70 billion parameter is happening why this model has a 70 billion parameter because every weights or every bias that is available in this you know this may be getting stored in 32 bits so what we can specifically do is that we can convert this 32 bits into as i said over here see conversion from a higher memory format to a lower memory format let's say i can, I can probably convert this 32 bit into int 8 and then download the model or then use the model right after doing this what will happen within my system i will be able to inference it right obviously for fine tuning if i want to fine tune it the new data set i will obviously require gpu but if i consider with respect to inferencing it becomes quite easy because now all my values that are stored in the form of 32 bits it will be stored in the form of 8 bits so what we are specifically doing over here we are converting from a high memory format to a low memory format and this is what is called as quantization a very important thing now why quantization is important because you will be able to inference it quickly see inferencing basically means what if i have an llm model if i give any input to that i should be able to get any output right i should be able to get response right now when i give any input all the calculation with respect to different different weights will happen right and obviously if i have a bigger gpu this inferencing will quickly happen right but if i have a gpu with less less cores let's say then what will happen this calculation will take time but if i convert my 32 bit to 8 bits right every weights are basically converted into 8 bits now just imagine the calculation will there be a difference yes it will happen a little bit much more quicker so quantization is very much important for inferencing and some of the example that i can probably talk about is that and obviously you may have heard about this it's not like only in llm models we specifically do right in different computer vision models in nlp models also where you think that there is a lot of weights that is involved and all these weights if i want to quantize it right i can actually do it right now this inferencing let's say i want to use a specific deep learning model in my mobile phone so in my mobile phone if i want to use it right in in a specific app then what i will do I will try to quantize right whatever deep learning model i have created from 32 bits to 8 bit and then i will try to deploy it in my mobile phone or any edge device any edge device 
right it is not possible that you can probably deploy this big model over there right it is not possible with so and so many parameters so what we do we basically perform quantization so i hope you are able to understand over here quantization is nothing but we are trying to lower down the memory right with respect to any weights that we have like from 32 to probably 6 uh, int 8 or let's say fp16 we can also say fp16 right let's say if i have an fp32 bit that is specifically required to store any information in my memory i can also convert this into fp16 bit this is also quantization only right usually all these values are stored in floating point right we specifically say this fp32 bit we say single precision or full precision we uh, for fp16 bit if i'm trying to convert like this it is basically called as half precision right so you should be able to understand all these technical terms right and in short this are nothing but these are floating point numbers right now similarly in tensorflow also you'll be able to see when we probably work with tensorflow you'll find tf32 bit right the data types the, the numbers are stored in this particular format right and it is important okay this is all our terminologies that are super important but i hope you got an idea what what is the main aim what is the main motivation out of quantization is that if i have a bigger model i should be able to quantize it and make it as a smaller model so that i can use it for my faster inferencing purpose both in mobile phones in the edge devices let's say in even watches smart watches i want to use it over here i can actually do that right now if i talk with respect to llm model also with the help of quantization see once we compress this particular model right later on we can also perform fine tuning right fine tuning but here there is one disadvantage when we quantize right when we perform this quantization since we are converting from 32 bits to int 8, let's say as an example, there is some loss of information also. And because of this, there will be some loss of accuracy. Now, how to overcome this? We will talk about it. There are different, different techniques how we can specifically overcome it. But I hope you got an example. What exactly is quantization? What is full precision, half precision? Half precision example is something like this. Now, let's talk about what exactly is calibration. Now, calibration basically means how we will be able to convert this 32 bit into int 8. Like, what is the formula? What is the mathematical intuition that is specifically required? Let's go ahead and discuss that. So, guys, now let's go ahead and try to understand how to perform quantization. And this is super important in terms of mathematical concept that I'm probably going to talk about. Because with us with the help of tensorflow just by writing four lines of code you know i will be able to perform quantization but it is important you should know that how you can actually do it manually whenever i talk in terms of what are the types of quantization that we have so we have two different types of quantization one is symmetric quantization and one is uh, called as asymmetric quantization now just by showing you an example you will be able to understand what is the exact difference between them okay Let's say I have a task and this first task that I am probably going to talk is with respect to symmetric and I understand. I hope in deep learning you have heard of something called as batch normalization. So if you have heard about this batch normalization, so batch normalization is a technique of symmetric quantization, right? So every time you'll be able to see that whenever we do forward propagation and backward propagation in between all the layers, we apply batch normalization so that all our all our weights are zero centered that is near the zero and the entire distribution of the weights will be centered near zero okay so batch normalization is one technique uh, of symmetric quantization so let's go ahead and see one example so this will be my first example over here i will go ahead and write it down and now you'll be able to understand it how symmetric quantization is basically performed now what is symmetric quantization you have understood from higher memory format to lower memory format will try to convert okay so here we are going to understand the mathematical intuition so let's go ahead and talk about one technique which is called as symmetric unsigned unsigned init unsigned int 8 okay quantization so we will see this technique first now here what is our main aim let's say 
I have a floating point number. Okay, let's go ahead and write it down. Let's say I have a floating point number between zero to thousand. Now just imagine that these are my weights, right? Whatever matrix mates I have, my values ranges between zero to thousand. Let's consider in this particular way, right? And this is let's say for, these are the weights for my larger model. Okay, larger model. Okay. Now one very important thing that you really need to understand, right? When I talk about any larger model, let's consider any LLM model. Okay. So in LLM model, you have a lot of parameters. Let's consider this is one kind of LLM model. Now, when I say all these weights are there, this may be getting stored in 32 bits. Okay. Usually uh, what will happen guys, the weights will not be in this range also. Okay. It will be in the minimalistic range. So I will just consider this as some numbers. Okay. So that you don't get confused with respect to these are some numbers. I will also not consider LLM model over here. And let's say this, this, these numbers are stored in the form of 32 bits. Okay. Now my main aim is to convert this into unsigned int eight. That basically means eight bit, right? So eight bit basically means what two raised to eight is how much two raised to eight. But when we say you unsigned, that basically means my value will be ranging between zero to 255. So I want to quantize from this values to this value. Okay. What is my aim? I want to quantize my range of values between zero to thousand to zero to 255. Okay. This is what is my aim with respect to this. Okay. So this is what is my target. Now let's see. Okay. So if I probably draw just a real points and the same thing we will do with the weights over there, whatever quantization process we are specifically doing. Let's say I have values between zero and this is basically thousand. Okay. Then what I will do over here, I want to convert this into again, zero to 255. Okay. Now let me talk about one very important thing, guys. Whenever we have any, let's, let's consider this one. If we have this single precision, single precision floating point 32, right? If we have this number, how this number is stored? Do you know that the one bit will specifically be used for sign or unsigned values, right? So let's say positive or negative. If positive is there, then this will be plus one. If negative is there, it will be minus one. So all the values are basically saved between zero to one, right? Uh, it can be zero or one. Okay. Then the next eight bits are stored for exponent. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay. So this is for sign. This is all numbers that you see. It is basically stored for exponent. This is how it is stored inside the memory and remaining 23 numbers, all these 23 bits will basically be saved for Mantessa. This is specifically for the fraction. So if I have a number which looks like 7.32, now 7.32 is a number, it is a positive number. So for my sign bit, there will be a positive value, let's say one over here. Then the seven will be probably put up in this eight bit. And remaining 0.32 will be put up in this Mantessa, right? So this is how the numbers are basically stored in the memory, right? If I consider an example with respect to FP16, right? Half precision floating point 16 bit, then you'll be able to see there'll be one bit for the sign number. There'll be five bits for the exponent. We basically say exponent one, two, three, four, five. Let's consider this five. Let's, let's draw till here. Okay. So this let's, let's, let's say that this is five, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. So this will be five and remaining, remaining 10 bits will be saved with respect to Mantessa. Mantessa. So we basically say this as a fraction, right? Anything that comes after the decimal, right? And this is how you will be able to see it will take, this will take less memory. This will take high memory, right? Now, what is our main aim over here? I already have a 32 bit number. I need to probably convert this into a range of unsigned int eight. 
unsanitated intent basically means i will not take any negative numbers it will be between 0 to 255 right this is what i really want to do okay now for this what will be the equation and i hope you have heard about something called as min max scalar i've i've repeated so many times this in my machine learning sections also so any number that is over here how will i be able to convert from this floating point to this unit 8 unit int 8 right unsigned intent right how i will be able to do it now for this let's go ahead and calculate it and what equation is specifically required okay so that basically means over here what we are going to do 0, 0.0 will be converted into a quantized value of 0 okay not 0, 0.0 it will be 0 and similarly 1000 should be converted to a quantized value of 255 at the end of the day the bits are decreasing so quantization is basically happening but we have to probably come up with a scale factor now what exactly is a scale factor so let me define a scale over here so here the scale formula will be x max divided by x mean and then they will be divided by q max minus q mean this q is nothing but quantization now what is the x max over here thousand right so this i will consider as my x this i will consider as my q right I'm showing you how quantization happens in a symmetric distribution. Symmetric basically means all the data is evenly distributed. Okay. And we really need to convert this based on this itself. These are evenly distributed. Now, what is X max? X max is nothing but 1000 minus 0. Then Q max. Q max basically means 255 minus 0. Right. So if I probably go ahead with this specific division, right then what will be the value that I will be having, right? 1000 divided by 255, it is nothing but 3.92. So this is nothing but this is called as a scale factor, right? Scale factor. So any number that I have over here, if I want to convert from this FP32 bit to uint8, I just need to use the scale along with one formula, which is called as round, okay? So I will apply round, with respect to any number, let's say if I consider 500 divided by 3.92 or let's let's just consider 250 divided by 3.92. So if I want to see what will happen to 250, right, what will be the number in this u int 8? So I can probably go ahead and divide it. It will be nothing but 250 divided by 3.92. So if I go and calculate it, it is nothing but 63.77 so if i do the rounding that basically means this will be 64. so in short any number that is over here let's say it is 250 over here this will get converted to a quantized value to 64 right so the same thing the code will also be doing and this is for symmetric unsigned intent okay quantization if I want a quantization some for some other factor, let's let's talk about this. Okay, so let's say uh, I have another kind of distribution and this is time that it is asymmetric and I want this as u int 8. So if I want to perform this quantization, so what will happen now in this particular case? Let's say if I have a values between minus 20.0 to 1000. Okay. So these are my floating point. Now I want to perform quantization and convert this into 0 to 255, right? Now in case of asymmetric, what will happen is that in my real number section, right? These numbers are not symmetrically distributed. It may be right skewed. It may be left skewed, okay? So in this scenario, you'll be able to see that my values are ranging between minus 20 to 1000. I want to convert this into this. Now in this scenario, if I apply the same formula, x max minus x mean, so how it will be? 1000 minus 20. So minus of minus 20 is nothing plus plus 20 divided by 255. So if I probably do the calculation, then you will be able to see that I will be getting somewhere around 4.0. Okay. Now, very important thing that basically means this 20.0, if I quantize it, right if i quantize it it will get converted to something like 4.0 oh uh, sorry this this is the my scale factor okay scale factor now if i take any number and try to convert it let's consider minus 20 
if I try to convert it by dividing by 4.0, right? And if I do the round, so what it will become? Minus 5, right? Minus 5 of round, this much I will probably get, minus 5, right? Now you can understand that this minus 20.0 is getting converted to minus 5.0. But you can see over here my distribution starts from 0 to 255. So how can I forcefully make this minus 20.0 to 0? All you have to do is that go ahead and add the same number in a positive way. So in this case, the number that you see this 5, right? This is basically called as 0 point, right? So there are two important parameters that we specifically talk with respect to quantization. One is zero point for, for the above one, since we have a symmetrical distribution here, the zero point was zero only and the scale was 3.92. In this particular case, since it is an asymmetrical distribution, here we have a zero point as nothing but five, but scale is 4.0. So these two parameters we usually require to perform quantization, okay? And these are some of the examples that I have shown you to give, just give you an idea like how quantization basically happens. And super important in terms of understanding is the simple equations, you'll be able to understand how things are basically working, right? At the end of the day, understand quantization is a simple process of converting that high uh, full single precision of full precision floating point 32 bits into small bits you know it can be uh, unsigned integer 8 it can be signed integer 8 if we say signed integer 8 then what will happen it is that it will be ranging between minus 128 to 127 and based on that you can specifically apply the formula right now let's go ahead see we had already discussed about these two topics one is this and Second one we wanted to discuss about calibration. Now this squeezing that you could see right from here to here to here, here to here, we are skew, squeezing it right. This squeezing process is basically called as calibration. Whatever process we are basically applying in this quantization process, it is nothing but it is called as calibration because we are squeezing those values from a higher format to a lower format. Okay. So that is nothing but calibration so we have completed both this thing okay now let's see what are the different modes of quantization one is called as post training quantization and qu quantization aware training right i will talk about this why it is super important both this technique okay so you'll get an idea about it over here so first of all we will go ahead and say post training quantization so what exactly is post training quantization here we already have a pre-trained model so we already have a pre-trained model now if i want to use this pre-trained model obviously the weights are very high here we apply calibration right when i say calibration that basically means squeezing the value from high format to a lower format right and then after performing this particular calibration, we take what kind of data? We take that weights data, whatever weights data is basically there in this particular pre-trained model. And then we convert this into a quantized model. Okay. So once we apply this process, then only we will be able to get the quantized model. And then we can use this entire model for any use cases. Okay for any use cases, right? This is a simple mechanism with respect to post-training quantization. See, understand post-training basically means I already have a pre-trained model where my weights are fixed. I don't need to change those weights. I will just take or download those weights. I will take this weights data, apply the calibration and then convert this into a quantized model, right? The second technique that we have written over here is quantization aware tech training, okay? quantization aware training. So let's talk about this. Quantization aware training. This is also called as Q. So this is also called as QAT. Okay, so we, we can write it as QAT. 
okay quantization aware technique this is basically called as ptq ptq okay so over here what is the exact difference we'll try to see between this two okay now in quantization aware training what happens see over here what is the problem if i probably perform calibration and if i create a quantized model there is a loss of data and because of this what will happen is that the accuracy will also decrease okay for any use cases but in the case of quantization aware training okay you will be able to see that we will be taking our trained model whatever trained model is there trained model is there okay let me just go ahead and write it down trained model is there then we perform quantization again quantization is what same the calibration process will apply over there we will probably do all these things okay and then once we do this the next step is that we will go ahead and perform fine tuning see we know that we know that with the help of ptq you will be seeing over here on the top some loss of data and accuracy is there but here with respect to fine tuning we will take new training data new training data now once we specifically take new training data we will be fine tuning this model and then we create a quantized model quantized model so with respect to any fine tuning technique that we will be seeing we don't use post training quantization we specifically use quantization aware training technique so that basically means we are just not losing accuracy or data over here because we are in turn adding more data for the training purpose and through this we will be fine tuning our data and then we create our quantized models right so this is the basic difference so all the fine tuning technique that i will probably show you in the future will be of this type that is quantization aware training so that we do not lose much data accuracy so i hope you got an idea with respect to all these three techniques guys going ahead there are two important techniques that we really need to understand one is clora and one is lora so this techniques specifically will be also understanding with respect to fine tuning so i hope you got an idea just get to know about all these things guys this is important because someone if someone ask in the interview what exactly it is then you will be able to understand it very much easily and again explaining all these things will be important if you are really interested because in generative ai what i feel is the most important thing is with respect to the fine tuning things so i hope uh, you like this particular video uh, this was it from my side i'll see you in the next video have a great day thank you one all take care bye bye